Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to track the Cinerace 20 HD, a pretty interesting micro quadcopter by Flywool that features molded plastic ducts and the new Cadix Polar Nano digital FPV camera. In this video I'm going to go over its features and specs, give you my feedback after testing it out and show you some flight footage. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside the box, along with the Cinerace 20 HD, you can find some spare screws and nuts, two sets of Gemfan ducted 51mm 5 bladed propellers, two battery velcro straps in different sizes, a shorter one for smaller batteries and a longer one for bigger ones. In addition, you're also getting a spare battery pad and a foam button protector, and you should note that no action camera mounts are included in the basic kit, so you can either purchase them separately or 3D print your own ones using the provided STL files. The action camera mounts that are available are for the Insta360 GO 2 slash Cadex Peanut camera, the Insta360 GO 1 and the SMO 4K and Naked GoPro cameras. As for the Cinerace 20, it is available in a couple of versions, which all of them are available with multiple ready receiver options. I've got the HD version, which is equipped with the Cadex Vista digital transmission system and the new Polar Nano FB camera, which I'm going to feature in a separate review. And you can also get an analog version, which is available in two variants. The normal version features a 13 amperes all-in-one flight controller, the Cadex Ant nano-sized FB camera, and the VTX 625, a 450 mW VTX, and the Pro version features a 20 amperes all-in-one flight controller, the Cadex Baby Retail V2 nano-sized FPV camera, and a more powerful 850mW VTX. In addition, just like the Pro version, the HD version features a Bluetooth module, which will enable you to wirelessly configure the flight controller using SpeedyBee's app, whereas the analog version is not bundled with this Bluetooth module. Now, by the way, another minor difference between the versions is the color of the frame, which is available separately, and these molded plastic ducts are also available separately in different colors, so you can customize your frame and make it more unique. In terms of features and specs, the Cinerace 20 features the Flywo Ninja 1203 Pro 3400 kV motors, which can handle up to 4 batteries, and their motor shaft diameter is 1.5 mm. The highlight of the frame is that it features two polycarbonate ducts, which are very durable, and are secured together using top and bottom carbon fiber plates. The wheelbase of the frame is 92 mm, it features a true X pattern, and the propellers nor the frame are not going to appear in your HD or FPV flight footage. On the center of the frame, which supports 16 by 16, 20 by 20, and 25.5 by 25.5 mm stacks, you can find the GOKO GN405S, a whoop-style all-in-one F4 flight controller that features an integrated 20 amperes BLLES 4-in-1 ESC, an onboard barometer, and plenty of yacht ports. A 25 volts 220 microfarad capacitor is pre-soldered to its battery pads, and while its micro USB connector is partially protected by this piece of foam, in my opinion it is still a little bit exposed, so I recommend to add a piece of foam or other material on its other side, in order to better protect it. A joystick connector for powering an SMO 4K camera is pre-soldered to the battery pads. The Vista unit, which in my case came pre-activated, is secured on top of the flight controller using its 25.5 by 25.5 mm mounting holes, and its USB Type-C connector is partially blocked by the duct, so maybe that's the reason it came pre-activated. However, you can still access it by removing the top plate, and slightly bending the duct. In addition, the frame only supports nano-sized FPV cameras and it provides plenty of protection for the camera unit and its lens. The digital version of the Cinerace 20 features the new Cadex Polar Nano digital FPV camera, which is, according to my experience with it so far, is especially good for flying at nighttime and it is much better than the Cadex Nebula Nano V2. On the back of the frame, you can find a 3D printed TPU part that secures the antenna of the VTX and also the radio receiver and its antenna. And as for the battery, it is mounted on the top plate and the Cinerace 20 is using an XT30 battery connector. 
Finally, as for mounting an action camera on top of the frame, it is done using one of these optional 3D printed TPU parts and this plastic part, which is an integrated part of the frame. In terms of weight, without a battery, the Cinerase 20HD weighs 117 grams, including a flywheel branded 300mAh 4S LHB battery, it weighs 159 grams. Including a GNB 600mAh 4S LHV battery, it weighs 172.5 grams. Including a flywheel branded 900mAh 4S LHV battery, it weighs 208 grams. And the weight of the quadcopter, including the Cadex Spinat HD action camera and its mount, is 146.6 grams. As for the polycarbonate ducts, on their own they weigh about 34 grams, and the dry weight of the frame without any electronic component is about 48 grams. As for setting up the Cinerase 20, and pretty much as expected from a good bind and fly model, everything is pre-configured for you and the quadcopter is pre-tuned, so basically if you have the bind and fly version, all you have to do is to bind your radio controller with the radio receiver, make sure that all the sticks are working properly, and define your favorite flight modes and OSD elements, and you are going to be good to go. Now by the way, in the description box of this video you can find a link to the original dump settings, so in case you changed anything in the settings and you would like to revert to the original default settings, you can simply use it. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Cinerase 20 HD, and overall after testing it out I can tell you that in my opinion it is a much better version of the Micron HD by Home FPV, as even though the Micron HD is slightly lighter, the Cinerase 20 HD flies better and longer and features better electronic components. In terms of durability, which is a key factor in the design of the Cinerase 20, as far as I can tell these polycarbonate ducts are not going to break easily in case of a crash and if they do break it's a great thing that they can be easily replaced. I also think that the Cinerase 20 features some of the design elements of the race whoop design by Frizillion, which makes it pretty robust and also very efficient. That brings me to the next highlight of the Cinerase 20. In terms of flight time, you can expect between 4.5 to 6 minutes using a 300mAh battery. Using a 600mAh battery is going to provide you with between 7.5 to 9 minutes of flight time, and when using a 900mAh battery, you can expect between 10 to 12 minutes of flight time, of course all depending on how you fly. Keep in mind though that when using the 900mAh Forest LHV battery, the performance of the Cinerase 20 is going to be rather limited, so it is only going to be suitable for cruising around, especially when mounting an action camera, which is roughly speaking going to reduce the flight time by about 2 minutes. Personally, I would stick to the 300 or 600 mAh Forest LHV battery, and if you really want to enjoy the performance of the Cinerase 20, I would stick to the 300 mAh battery, even though the flight time is going to be reduced. But anyway, keep in mind that this is not something that I would recommend for freestyling, so I think that the best purpose of this quadcopter is to be used as a great platform for carrying a small action camera, for capturing HD footage in a relatively safe manner, both indoors and outdoors. So in my opinion, in case you are looking for a small, lightweight and robust micro quadcopter that features ducted propeller guards, the Cinerase 20 is definitely something that you would like to check out, and it can be a great alternative over a traditional Cinewhoop, as it is smaller, much quieter, and will provide you with more flight time. Now I'm going to wrap up this review with some flight footage, so I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.